Yeah, but back to Kate feeling bad. Don't feel bad for having hope. We all, I, I phone banked for Obama in 08, you know? We all want hope. We all want this. We all want someone to come in and like, because we need to we need leaders to articulate that. We need leaders to to go and and make. Yeah, you know what, man? Though we um, we need like an FDR type president, certainly. But you know what? I think we need even more than that. We need our Eugene Debs. Yeah, oh we God. need someone who is going to shut shit down and someone who is going to lead that and is going to shut it down. That's what we need. I mean, I'm, I'm reading a labor history book and I'm just like, man, the stuff that they did in like the 1800s and they had like horseback and telegrams and shit. We got to do this. Shut it down. I know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, if somebody said you can get your FDR, or Eugene Debs, but you can only have one, I would pick a Eugene Debs for right now. I'd be like, give us our Eugene Debs. Because you know what? Even if we did have our FDR, you'd have an entire Congress and Senate working against that FDR. So I'd be like, you know what? Give us our Eugene Debs. Give us our give us our person who is going to bring about a general strike similar to what's going on in India right now and shut shit down. That's why they put Eugene, Eugene Debs in jail. Mm -hmm. He was too powerful. He was shutting stuff down. He was really fucking up the capitalists, man. I mean, it was like... The more you read about Debs, it's like, wow, that guy had it right. I agree, Ron. It's like an FDR has to run and get elected and blah, 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 and a cabinet. Nye, 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 and just like Debs would just be like, we need somebody like a real labor, somebody, I don't know, maybe like Chris Smalls, get him. I don't know what. Yeah, it's like, well, like, and it's about shifting the status quo too. It's yeah. not just about like, all right, let's put a really nice Band-Aid on this freaking thing. It's about like, no, 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 we're done. This is over. This is this is the end of a freaking era, or should I say error? Because that's what this neoliberal health is. It's an error, and it's time to recover from this fucking error before it's too late. So yeah, yeah, we, we need our Eugene Debs, and... uh I mean, I don't know. I, I'm not, I wish I could be that guy, but <laughs> I'm not cool enough. <laughs> I'm willing to do my part as a communication vehicle. I mean, I've thought about that. Cause like, but I don't know. I feel like I would need some type of money or infrastructure behind me or something. People said, Graham, why don't you run for this or that? I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't know, no, man. man. You and I are outsiders, man. We're not meant to be. You can't have a revolutionary minded person be a reformer. They're not going to be able to do it. They're going to fuck that up. Similarly, you can't ask a reformer to be a revolutionary. That's why Bernie didn't work out. We wanted a reformer to be a revolutionary. It just doesn't work that way. There's nothing wrong with being a reformer. There's nothing. We need reformers, but you can't ask them to be revolutionary. So they're not going to do that. And right now, the thing we need the most is a revolutionary that can organize the shit that needs organized. I, I mean, and it takes, and that's one of the problems is that at, in a lot of these unions, some of the folks at the top are, are also corrupt to an extent. And, and that's a big problem because if that wasn't the case, you know, you'd have a situation where they'd be like, okay, now is the time to use those resources when we really need to shut shit down. And to make sure everybody is taken care of because you ain't going to work. You're getting with us on the picket line. And I mean, that's the, what needs to happen. Well, yeah, it's true. But they also, the other thing, part of the corruption of these organizations is the private intelligence community puts people inside of them to cause problems and create infighting. I mean, that's literally, those documents are out there. Yeah. I mean, the, the leaked documents and the, and the Freedom of Information Act documents, that's what they do. Their job is to infiltrate and, and cause problems and just create infighting and chaos so that there's no unified movement. That's what they do. So it's so hard to like even create a movement because it yeah. gets infiltrated by private intelligence. Like yeah. it's unbelievable. I mean, like, so I don't, I didn't even know how to do it. That's part of it. Like I could, Oh, I'm going to lead a movement. Like, am I? And then I'm going to have someone come up, Graham, we're, we're behind you hundred percent. And that's some private intelligence person that is deliberately fucking things up. Yeah, I've seen man. It scales on smaller organizations. I've just seen people show up and, oh, there's someone so is dating this person. And 
wait a minute, this dating, this guy keeps causing problems and calling people out. And then the person he's dating is defending them. And it's like, wow. And you find out their private intelligence. It's like crazy. So they know they're like trained on how to prey on people and how to emotionally manipulate people. It's like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, when you meet some of those people, you're like, oh, are you just that fucking ridiculous or are you intelligent? I know. You're like, are you just, are you just, are you just this fucking ridiculous? Yeah. Because you're really ridiculous. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, you're, are you just like one of these, it's both sometimes it's like, oh, it attracts, you know, movements and revolutionary things. Sometimes attracts, I'm like a little bit out to lunch types who just, they're just not functioning properly up top or whatever. And then it's like, or they're, they're, they're paid and trained to, to disrupt in that way. You know, I don't know. Ryan Larson, shave your knuckles for justice. Will they torture me when they see my WikiLeaks tap to we're entering 1984 with Biden administration allied with big tech censorship fascism. I know that, that let's talk about this Ron Placone. I mean, yay, Trump's gone and all that, but you're really seeing the democratic party and the corporate media having no problem and big tech Silicon Valley censoring people mm -hmm. like it's like we got rid of Trump who was like an overt fascist. And now we're going to have this like a little cuddly Silicon Valley blue MAGA fascism. Like, mm -hmm. like when Obama turned us into a surveillance state, when he expanded all that shit that Bush put in place with the Patriot act. How, how do you see that playing out on a, a Biden administration's dealing with, and especially near attendance in the, and she, my God, yeah. she loves censoring people. She loves bombing people. Like, well, it's not good because, and this problem goes beyond one president. I, I mean, this problem really goes into the fact that you have a lot of people in government, uh, both Republican and Democrat, where, I mean, to put it simply, and, but this is the truth. They don't really understand the technology they're making laws about. Right. You know, I mean, especially getting into, you know, Trump's whole thing with uh, with Section 230, which is executive order is a disaster. His whole idea to blow up Section 230, that's the equivalent of trying to fix a broken arm by setting the person on fire. It, it, it's just it's just a horrible way to solve a problem. It just transfers authoritarianism over from silicon valley to the fcc and it will lead to more censorship not less because these platforms will be scared of lawsuits so they're just going to censor everybody that's what's going to go down that's what it already is going down joe biden's for it too by the way this isn't just trump's uh solution joe biden is for the same thing uh and then you see hearings on this thing where if you go to like a decent digital rights blog or, or, or tech uh outlet they will have the transcript of what Ted Cruz said or someone like Ted Cruz, what they said. And then underneath it, they, so this is why he has no idea what the fuck he is talking about. This is what he claimed. This is what this law actually is and what it does. Ted Cruz, honestly, it's not even like he's being uh, deceptive. He's, that clueless he just has no idea what the fuck he is saying and so many of them fall into that camp and this isn't rocket science you know who really was the best on digital rights as of recent in the political sphere bernie sanders do you think it's because bernie sanders spends six hours a day on reddit i bet you he doesn't you know what he does do though and this isn't all that hard he listens to the right fucking people about these things. That's what he does. He listened about facial recognition. And he's like, yeah, I'm for a ban. He listened on net neutrality. He listened on municipal broadband and made the right decisions. It's not that hard. It's just somebody like Trump doesn't know how to listen. Someone like Biden doesn't know how to listen, nor do they have any interest in doing so. So, you know, I think a lot of these battles are going to continue. I don't think they really change all that much now that Trump's not in office. I know that we're hoping for a better tomorrow with the FCC. Ajit Pai is going away in January. That's great. Who are they going to replace him with? Well, 
Joe Biden has promised a pro net neutrality FCC uh, chair, but I'll believe that when I see it. Can I just take his word for it? No, I can't, unfortunately. But, you know, he did make that promise and it's up to we, the people and we, the activists to make sure he keeps that promise. The person he appoints will probably not be great, but if they can at least be a vote in the right direction for restoring net neutrality, that's a win we can work with. So, you know, we'll see what happens, but I think the front lines don't really change at all. That's interesting. I, it's interesting. Yeah. It's, it's, they're going to, and, and, and it's amazing to see how, you know, a lot of liberals don't have problems with censorship when it comes from Democrats, you know, or, or they're, fun loving tech billionaires that they've given their personal data over to. <laughs> well, and so, I think some of them don't understand what they're calling for. Right. Like they right. just, they're, they're blinded by the tree. So they don't see the forest and they don't realize what they're actually calling for. And, you know, that is one of the problems when you have, you know, somebody like a Joe Biden who can kind of be a nice face on potentially horrible policies. You know, I mean, I, I remember I, I was having a conversation with a, a more neoliberal minded person a couple of years ago, and we were talking about net neutrality. And they were like, oh, you know, I, I got to say, Ron, I know you're not a big fan of Hillary, but this is one of the things why you should have, you know, why we should have uh, voted Hillary. And if Hillary was here, we wouldn't be having this problem. And it's like, you know what? I'm sorry if Hillary was president. I mean, it's, it's tough to forecast that one way or the other, honestly. But if Hillary was president, I think there's also a good chance that we'd be having the same battle. The only difference would be I'd be having to explain to you why net neutrality is a big fucking deal. <laughs> yes, I think that's an excellent point. Well, it'll be interesting to see how this shakes out and what blue MAGA people, if any, if any of them wake up and what sort of passive vote any blue will do people will wake up. Um, because they can't keep screaming Trump, 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 Trump. Now that he's gone, like they can't, they can't, yeah. they can't do that. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, all right, folks, like, share, subscribe, follow Ron Placone, watch, get your news on with Ron and support everything we're doing on this channel and shave your knuckles for justice. Boom. Thanks for watching everybody. Please hit the like button, the subscribe button. Go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood and rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood where you can support the show. Also, I have a Bitcoin wallet, a Bitcoin cash wallet, and an Ethereum wallet in the show notes. We're taking cryptocurrency. I have a Coinbase affiliation link. We're going to be getting on some other exchanges. So that's how you support the show. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. YouTube is unsubscribing us at an alarming rate. I have a PayPal button at GrahamElwood.com. I even have a Venmo at Graham-Elwood. There's a lot of ways to support our show. We are getting crushed by YouTube. They're We've dipped under 73,000 subscribers because of YouTube. Thanks for supporting what we do.